like to invite two of my colleagues to join to explain how to join our language interpretation rooms. Hola, si tiene una pregunta técnica de Zoom o los enseres de Zoom durante la junta, favor de usar el chat. Nuestro asistente técnico bajo el nombre de Zoom Tech le ayudará con su problema. También ofrecemos interpretación en español durante esta junta. Para escoger el audio en inglés o en español, tendrá que picar el botón de interpretación, el cual tiene una imagen de un mundo. Cuando le pica la interpretación, por favor de escoger el idioma cual le gustaría oír. Thank you. Before we get started on the material we have to cover for tonight, I'd like to cover a few of the technical controls for people who might not be familiar with Zoom. First of all, we'll have a presentation and I'd ask that you hold all of your questions till the end. We will have plenty of time for comments and questions. Uh, second, I'd like to explain that we will be using the chat in this meeting tonight, or you can use the chat in this meeting tonight. Um, if you have questions, you can chat to what should be the first box in your chat um, to technical support for help in uh, any Zoom features that you may be having trouble with. You will see farther down the list, um, another chat box that says send questions here. Also Arthur uh, on our team, he'll be gathering all of the questions that come in and making sure that we answer those this evening. If we can go forward to the next slide, please. We also have closed captioning this evening. I'd like to thank Denise, who is with us uh, providing that service. To view the closed captions, you're going to click the closed caption, or excuse me, live transcription button at the bottom of the screen. Uh, and you can change and adjust the size as needed um, for the closed captions. Uh, we also have ASL interpreters with us tonight. The ASL, uh, while presenting slides, the view using ASL interpretation can change. Um, generally speaking, you want to keep your view on gallery mode, and you can change that at the top right corner of your screen. That should show all of the present presenters together and the interpreter as well. Um, Oftentimes the default setting might only show the interpreter, excuse me, the speaker and not the ASL interpreter. To change this, you can pin the interpreter's video. To do this, click the three ellipses at the top right corner of the interpreter's video and select pin video. You'll have to repeat this process um, every time the interpreters switch, which is about every 20 minutes. And I'd like to thank all of the interpreters who are here with us this evening. Linda and Sharon helping us with ASL. Um, we have Jordan and Laura in the Spanish language room and our, and our uh, Cantonese interpreters. I've actually lost their names. I think we have Joan and uh, another Cantonese interpreter. I thank you for being with us uh, tonight. I think we can go forward to the next slide. In this meeting tonight, we have many members of the MBTA team. Again, my name is Lindsay Heffernan. I'm the Assistant General Manager for Policy and Transit Planning, but I'd like to welcome the other members of my team who will be helping to answer any questions that you may have and who you may see a little later. Good evening, everyone. My name is Stephen Povich, and I'm the Director of Fair Policy and Analytics at the MBTA. Thank you for joining. Hi there. My name is Arthur Prokosh, and I'm the manager of Fair Tariff at the MBTA. 
Hi, I'm Neil Vasabda, and I am the technical lead for policy implementation of MBTA. So we are here tonight, and uh, we can go forward to the next slide. I'm gonna turn the program over to Stephen to walk us through a few slides and just to help with the um, agenda setting this evening. We have about a 10 or 15 minute presentation and then we'll be turning it over to questions from all of you. Sylvia, if you don't mind going forward a slide, um, Stephen's here to talk about our uh, all of the changes we're making to FAIR Media um, in the over the coming years. And I will turn it over to you, Stephen, to get us started. Thanks. Thank you, Lindsay. And, and again, thank you everyone for joining. We're here tonight to talk about changes to our FAIR Media or the ways people pay to ride the MBTA. And the changes here are twofold. First, there are changes to the way people pay. And the second are some policy implications of those changes. So we're here to talk about both of these factors. You'll see on many of the slides that we describe the situation in the current system that you may be familiar with today as a rider of the MBTA, and also the system that will be launching in the future through fare transformation, which have some of these changes embedded within it. In terms of the new ways to pay, today riders can use a Charlie card, Charlie ticket, or cash to pay their fares. In the new system, we'll have a number of new payment options that you'll be able to tap when you arrive. These are displayed below. From left to right, we have the new Charlie card, which is a hard plastic card, similar to the Charlie card you're familiar with today. These Charlie cards will be dispensed from station fare vending machines and at many sales locations throughout our network. Temporary Charlie cards are a thinner plastic card that will be dispensed from streetscape fare vending machines and can be upgraded for free to a full Charlie card. They're also sold in bulk for short-term use for things like conferences or through so social service agencies. We'll also be launching a mobile Charlie card, which is a virtual card held on a mobile device that can be tapped directly on a reader. Contactless credit cards, which, are the co which you may have in your wallet today and you tap to check out at normal stores and restaurants. Uh, in the same way, this will be tappable on our Charlie readers. And finally, the mobile wallet, credit cards or debit cards that are carried on your mobile phone uh, can also be tapped directly on readers to board the system. Next slide, please. As I mentioned, there are a number of policy changes that relate to these changes to ways to pay. We'll go through these one at a time. The first is that we'll now be charging for Charlie cards. In today's system, Charlie cards are free, but can be difficult to find. With, through fare transformation, Charlie cards will be available at every fare vending machine, many Charlie retailers, over the phone, or via the mobile app, either physically or for a mobile version. Charlie cards, both physical and mobile, will cost a one-time fee of $3. I would note that contactless credit cards and mobile wallets will not have this fee associated with it. The $3 fee serves a number of purposes. First, it covers the cost of the card, and also provides one more trip protection. The idea that you can board a train or bus with low or zero balance. We'll get into the details of that on the next slide. I'd also note here that reduced, oops, can we go back one slide please? Thank you. I'd also note here that reduced fare program participants will receive a card for free without the $3 fee. And we're creating programs to partner with local organizations to ensure that we distribute cards to low income communities so this isn't a burden for riders of our system. Next slide, please. As I mentioned, I'll now talk about one more trip protection. In today's system, if you show up at a bus stop without cash and don't have enough balance on your Charlie card, you're out of luck. In the future, we're implementing one more trip protection to ensure that riders aren't stranded without a way to pay or add money. We know that riders almost always either start or end their trip someplace they can refill their card. The way this works is that a rider with a balance above zero but below the fare needed to board a uh, bus or subway uh, can tap their card at the reader uh, and will still be allowed to board, uh, to board the system and will go negative by some amount. I think this is best illustrated with the example at the right. 
Say you arrive at a bus stop with a balance of zero dollars on your card. You board the bus and tap your card on a reader. In the past, you would have been rejected, but now the balance on your card will go down from zero to negative one dollar and seventy cents, the bus fare. Say you get off at a rapid transit stop and transfer, the balance will go further negative with the step up fare from $1.70 to $2.40, so your balance will be negative $2.40. At this time, you would not be able to start a new journey with a balance in the negative, but you could reload $5 at a fare vending machine on the mobile app, et cetera, and have a balance of say $2.60 on your card that could be used to continue traveling through the system. We can go to the next slide, please. The next change is that each rider will need their own card. In certain circumstances today, riders can share a single Charlie card, something we call pass back, where the first person taps the card, the card is debited by the amount of the fare, they pass it to their friend or family member, they tap the card and walk through the gate. And that can go on uh, for a number of passengers. In the future, card sharing will be prevented for a number of reasons. It ensures correct pricing of commuter rail trips. We want to assure that we don't have accidental charges. And we want to make sure that everyone can prove that they paid when we implement all door boarding on bus and service line green line. So folks will need to have their own car that demonstrates that they paid for the ride they're taking. I would note that we're making it much easier for everyone to get a Charlie card, excuse me, a card, both Charlie Media, like the Charlie card on your phone or the physical Charlie card. And it'll also be a lot easier to pay with contactless credit cards and things like that. And finally, children 11 and under will still ride for free and don't need a card. Next slide, please. Finally, I'm going to walk through the timeline for these changes and then we'll open it for questions. Last month, we proposed these fair media changes to the MBTA board and open public comment. We're spending the month of March taking public comment, both informally and formally. We held a public meeting a week ago today, and you're here tonight at our public hearing. We've also met with a number of interested groups and continue to take comment through our email and other forums, as we'll describe later. Public comment for these changes will close on March 31st, the end of the month. In April, we'll collate the comments, make any changes, and work with our partners at CTPS on the equity analysis related to these changes. And in terms of implementation, the full board will be asked to vote before these are implemented, and these will go into effect when the new fare collection system is implemented on bus and rapid transit. With that, we can go to the next slide. And I'm going to pass it back to Lindsay to introduce how to comment and ask questions. Thank you very much, Stephen. Um, I'd like to just remind those who are not in an interpretation room, um, since we have so many different interpretation rooms going on tonight, if a question is asked in one of those rooms, I want everyone to be able to hear it. So please do take a moment. At the bottom of your screen, there is a um, there should be a button that says um, interpretation. It almost looks like a little globe. Click that button and click English. Uh, this is in case somebody asks a question in one of the one of the um, non-English speaking rooms that you'll be able to hear the interpreter. Uh, so thank you. So tonight, uh, we wanna hear from you. Uh, to ask a question or make a comment, you're going to raise your hand, but you're gonna have to do that virtually. <laughs> Here's how we're gonna do that. Um, if you're on a computer, you are either going to hit the Alt and then Y key or click the raised hand button at the bottom center of your screen. If you're on a mobile device, you're gonna tap the raised hand button um, at the bottom of your screen. And if you're on a phone, you can dial star nine. Once you've raised your hand, you will be um, added to the queue with other who, others who have raised their hands. And I'll call on folks on a first come first serve basis. When it's your turn to speak, I'll say your name or the last four digits of your phone number and I will let you know that I am unmuting you. If you're on a computer or mobile device, a box will pop up in the center of your screen and you will need to confirm that you would like to be unmuted before you begin speaking. If you're on a phone, um, you will hear an automated recording that will let you know that you are unmuted 
and you may speak as soon as that recording finishes. Once you're unmuted, everyone in the meeting can hear you. Uh, before asking your question, I would ask that you state your name and any organizational affiliation, if you have any. We would also ask that you make one comment or question at a time so that everybody has a chance to speak. If you have an additional question, we don't have too many people here this evening, please do feel free to raise your hand again. When you're finished speaking, uh, you will be um, muted at that point in time. I wanna remind you that you can also post a question into our chat. Um, if you could see, there is a um, ask questions here, um, uh, I think is what it says. Maybe you can put a message in the chat there. Um, we're gonna do our best to make sure if you post all of your questions to me, it can be hard for me to find them, uh, but we'll be collating them all and making sure we get them answered before we are done. Um, and also if you have a comment to make that you have written down and it's maybe particularly lengthy, I just remind you to go slowly because of the number of interpreters we have this evening to make sure both we can capture it, but also uh, that everyone can participate in here. So I see um, a couple of raised hands. And so why don't we start there? And then I would encourage you to either raise your hand with a comment or, um, to put your question into the chat. And uh, last name, Baxter, I am unmuting you. Okay. I'm confused with the, uh, when you're charging for the Charlie card, can you hear me? Yep, yep, we hear you just fine. Okay, when they're charging for the Charlie card, um, that, that is sort of privatizing. That you take it in a way that it is a public good and it's hired for low income people. And you're paying for the people that you hired to make the new system, you're paying billions of dollars. And I'm a member of the public uh, good, public transit, public good coalition. <coughs> and sort of privatize <coughs> the system. And they're paying more. And th th this is somewhat how the song Charlie on the Tea got back, uh, started. Private company had owned the tea. They gave it to the state, but they made, they loaned to the state and they paid. And no matter what happened, <coughs> the companies would get the money back. And so, the, so no matter what happened, they would get paid. It, even if the tea failed or the thing. And so they were raising fares to pay them. And like, we're going to be paying more for this. And like, the, you're talking about this is for low, a lot of low income people on, on the programs, like our frontline workers. Barbara Ehrlichman did a book once that says that Nichols and Dime not make it in America, saying the front line, work, the front, front line workers are the ones that are subsidizing us with low wages. And I would say not charging the Charlie cards like the pass back is it's kinda hard if somebody's only here one day to get a special card. And just is I think the tea should be a public good. And uh for uh it, it should be a public I feel that you know, the, the tea should be a public good and that we need to consider all these things. Thank you. Lindsay, you're on mute. Thank you. Thank you, um, Ms. Baxter. Thank you for being here this evening. It's good to see you, even if virtually. Um, and I appreciate your concern and your comments about particularly the cost uh, for, for the card. But we've captured all of those, those concerns. And I hear you um, regarding frontline workers and their ability to pay. Um, at this point, I'm going to unmute last name um, Williams. So good evening, thank you, Lindsay. Um, and good evening to the rest of you all. Um, <clears throat> my name is Click Williams. I'm an organizer at Community Labor United um, or better known as CLU. CLU represents over 100,000 uh, working class families throughout greater Boston, uh, bringing together community and labor partners to raise our voices on issues that matter the most to us. CLU convenes the Public Transit Public Good Coalition, 
a group of workers and writers united Excuse to fight. Excuse me, Mr. Williams, could you please slow down oh, no. because this is being interpreted? I'm sorry to interrupt. Many apologies. Um, I will, we call it, definitely take it down to pace. Um, uh, CLU, CLU represents over 100,000 working class families throughout greater Boston, bringing together community and labor partners to raise our voices on issues that matter the most to us. CLU convenes the Public Transit Public Good Coalition, a group of workers and writers united to fight for a better public transit system. In a time where the cost of living is steadily outpacing the amount of money that residents of Massachusetts make, the cost of transit is already a burden on low-income riders. My family too experiences this. Uh, my family and I just moved to Brockton. Um, we, would pay, we would pay almost $300 monthly to use commuter rail to get to, get to work um, and to Boston. It is cheaper to drive and park than to take a train. For riders without means to afford a car, expensive fares, mean they simply cannot get around. Transit costs are already higher than many riders can afford. A proposed Charlie card fee adds insult to injury, adding yet another cost to the ride, or another cost to ride the MBTA. Mm -hmm. To truly make sure that low-income riders are not burdened by this new surcharge, the MBTA should enact a low-income fare. Mm -hmm. We believe that a plan, uh, we believe that a plan not to cha charge riders who have a discounted fare already is a move in the correct direction, but most low-income riders would not benefit from that. A plan to temporarily distribute Charlie cards to low-income people through social service agencies is not, is not enough to address the need in an ongoing and equitable way. We would also, we would also say that ending the pass back with automated fare, uh, fare collection is another failure that the MBTA's privatized fare collection system um, Passbacks are a convenient way for families and some families and tourists to travel. While riders are asked to pay an extra surcharge, corporations are enriching themselves off the backs of low-income low -income residents. The Charlie card surcharge and ending passbacks are only necessary because of the drawbacks of the MBTA's privatized fare collecting system. The T is paying Cubic Corporation and John Lang nearly a billion dollars on this deal, while low-income riders are paying more. We oppose the fair collection system that extracts funds from working class and for, from the working class and enriches the wealthy corporations. With nearly five hundred million dollars freed up from an influx in federal aid, the MBTA can afford a low-income fare program and would bring more equity to fair, to fair policy. I would hope that the MBTA continues to strive for accessibility for all riders, both financially and with both financially and with uh, accessibility in mind. Outreach materials, phone lines, and fare card machines and stations must be available in multiple languages, particularly Chinese, Portuguese, Spanish, and Haitian Creole, as well as making sure our seniors are aware of any changes and offer an easy application or, or renewal process for the senior pass. I would hope as the MBTA strives to be a world-class system, it would remember its most vulnerable riders and the fact that it should be continually striving for equity, affordability, and accessibility um, in how it serves the riders of the system. Thank you. Thank you, Kalik. I'm glad you're glad you're here, and thank you for all of your comments. At this point, I'm going to unmute the last name Montano, and then I'll start to go through some of the comments that we have in the chat. Hi, uh, my name is Sam Montano. I use she, her, they, them pronouns, and I'm director of organizing at Green Roots, um, which is located in Chelsea and East Boston, and I'm part of the Public Transit Public Good um, Coalition. We concerns that we've heard uh, about this new proposed fare program uh, involve um, seniors feeling like it's a right now one of the only places they can get T cards is by going downtown, so it's inaccessible to their needs um, currently, and they struggle to find T passes in Chelsea, especially. So that's already a concern for us. Um, another concern that we've heard a lot is. I know there are options for cash, but a lot of folks don't necessarily have um, banking options. And so doing this switch to a more digital um, Charlie card will help folks, but also still keep folks who are most vulnerable to issues with banking away from accessing the transit needs. In addition, I think passbacks are a really big concern in this community. A lot of folks have one C card that they load up, and put money on, and they'd like to be able to pass it back to other folks in their family. Um, 
And last, I, I, the, the fee seems to be out of step with the moves that we are trying to make to create a progressive MBTA system. We're trying to create more accessibility and more freedom for folks to access the public transit, which is a public good, and should be provided by the state. And adding this fee creates another barrier for folks accessing the T. Um, and then just lastly, we know that there's lots of folks who don't, who are just um, over low income guidelines and who are still struggling to make ends meet, but they don't qualify for what we've designated as low income as a state or the federal guideline. And so those folks still need to be um, protected and included in this work. So making sure that we're not just creating a free pass for folks who are in the low income guidelines, but we're also considering who's missing, who's just missing the cut and who can continue to need that support. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. I do appreciate them, all of them. Let me um, take a moment to uh, address some of the pieces that have come up in the chat. Um, one of the questions, someone asked, are the fares also going up? And fares are not going up as a result of this new system. It will enable some new flexibility on fares, but we are not presenting any changes to the board to increase uh, fares at this, at this time. Um, I note the concerns people have already raised about the fee for the Charlie card, but that is not an ongoing uh, fare change. Um, uh, somebody asked a question of, uh, sorry, let me, let me back up. I'm having a little hard time following. Uh, I'm hoping to hear during the presentation how the MBTA will address the loss of fare collection and the ability to monitor ridership at above ground stations where the rear and side doors are open for riders to uh, disembark, but riders board the car from the uh, rear or side doors without paying. This happens a fair amount, especially during rush hour when the cars are very full. And I wonder if I could um, ask my colleague Neelay to unmute himself and provide some context for what the plan is on um, a, a fair evasion or non, non payment at red rear doors. Sure. <clears throat> There's a couple elements here. So I want to address the first part of it. Um, our plan is to install readers at the back door of all surface level vehicles. So that includes bus and green line trains. And the idea is that riders will be able to tap at any door that they board at. So we, we're still able to get that ridership information. I know that was part of the concern in the question. The second part of that, um, that we've heard a lot of concern about is if people are able to board at the rear door, how can, we, how can it be guaranteed that people actually paid their fare? So in addition to that, we are deploying fare verification teams throughout the system to check that people have paid their fare. Uh, fare verification staff will have a device that uh, people can tap their cards on, and the device will indicate to staff whether or not people paid the correct fare for where they are. Um, Lindsay, if there's anything else you want to add about fare verification. Nope, I think you'll, the, we'll be talking more with the public about fare verification over the uh, coming 18 months or, or two years, but thank you, Neely, for giving some context there. I appreciate yeah. that. Um, Will old Charlie cards continue to work or will they need to be replaced? Ultimately, your Charlie cards will need to be replaced. Uh, you will, however, be able to transfer your balance from an old Charlie card uh, to a new Charlie card. Um, and then, do you know what the mobile app will be for our new transit system? Um, to plan your trip, you can continue to use your favorite app or website to purchase fares or passes. We will be publishing a new Charlie um, app site, and uh, you can also use your phone's wallet in the future to pay for your fare uh, if that's of interest to uh, folks. And then another question, and then I'll go back to people with raised hands. Um, will there still be senior fares? Yes, absolutely, there will still be a senior fare. The new system is going to make it easier both to apply for, to renew, and to manage your senior fare membership, but the senior fare is definitely not going away. Um, I'm going to go back to folks uh, again, uh, raise your hands if you'd like to make a, make a comment or um, ask a question, and I'm going to unmute the last name, um, Lombos. 
Thank you so much, Lindsay. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Darlene Lombos, and I'm the Executive Secretary Treasurer of the Greater Boston Labor Council. Um, I'm here tonight representing over 100,000 workers and their families in the region, um, many of them who take public transit or public transit riders. Our union members are the ones building your homes and hospitals. Our union members are the ones teaching your children at school and child care centers. Our union members are the ones driving your fathers and mothers to work and to grocery stores. And our union members are the ones taking care of your grandparents at nursing homes and senior centers. And tonight we speak in one voice to support a low income fare before imposing any new fare fees on these Charlie cards. These fees only benefit the companies already making profits on the MBTA's privatized collected fare system. We are against taking money from any workers, any taxpayers, and, and the public good, and turning it over to greedy corporations who care more about profits than about people. We believe in public transit as a public good, and we urge you to create a low-income fare before imposing any fees and on um, any that benefit the rich and, and do not benefit our communities. Thank you, and thanks for um, uh, letting me speak tonight. Thank, thank you very much um, for your comment. I certainly appreciate them and note, note those for, for our record here. We have a few things coming in on the chat, but why don't I, oh, let me pause for a moment and ask if any, if we have any comments in either of the interpretation rooms. I don't, thank you very much. And in the Spanish language room, do we have any questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, all right, then uh, let me answer a couple of questions in the chat that are coming in. Um, does this new um, regimen allow the MBTA to better monitor ridership, the number of riders or the level and changes in demand? Um, and I think uh, this is, a good question for many people on the call, but I'll take this one. Um, by integrating all of our MBTA modes into one fair collection system, the MBTA will be much better able to monitor ridership patterns and overarching travel um, demand. Uh, that said, we're taking rider privacy very seriously and also have built-in protections in order to protect data of individual riders uh, while being able to look at aggregate system ridership. So yes, we're certainly um, excited about what this means for our ability to plan across all of the MBTA modes. Um, the, we have a comment in the chat. I have found lots of discarded and wasted Charlie cards everywhere in the system. By charging the $3 for a card, we can prevent a lot of this waste. I thank you for the comment um, and appreciate the sentiment behind that one. Um, let's see. Um, I am going to, I think, go back to, we have a, a last name of Davis. I'm going to ask you to unmute. Yes. Um, my name is Sabrina Davis. I am I work on the environmental and transit campaigns for the Coalition for Social Justice, and I am a member of the Public Transit Public Good Coalition. I'd like to just point out for a second that no other RTA district in the state of Massachusetts currently charges for a trolley card. Um, I believe this is extremely inequitable. Um, there are so many missing people uh, when it comes to this. There are some people who are undocumented that can't have bank accounts or have a really hard time with that, that, that totally misses them. Um, second off, I don't think that this new way through technology to pay is really for low-income people. Um, I think this overly benefits uh, people who are more well-to-do. 
um, the issue of passbacks, um, I can speak from personal experience because I bring uh, a lot of low-income volunteers up to the state house and we generally go through Quincy Adams. Um, loading up that card with all, all the fares for all the volunteers and just passing it back is way easier to do. So um, I also question how much you can uh, expect children to mind their Charlie cards which is another reason why I think past facts should still continue. Um, and I, I really just don't understand in this, at this time why you went with this brand new billion dollar uh, new fare collection. It seems like things are pretty tight at the T from what I've heard, there are deficits. And it just doesn't seem like that this was a good use of that money, um, spending money that you just didn't have on something that really doesn't benefit low-income people at all. Um, that money could have been better spent on a low-income fare. Um, and um, yeah, no, I, I just think it's foolish. It's extremely inequitable. Um, in regards to some things that I heard about fair evasion, enforcing fair evasion is another added expense to the T for something that is not overly a problem when it comes to people writing the T. Thank you, Ms. Davis, for your for your comments across a variety of issues. I, I appreciate where you're where you're coming from, and I thank you for joining us this evening. Um, I we have some questions in the chat, and then if I can take a couple of those, and then I'm going to come to uh, Ms. Bush Miles next. Can I answer a couple questions here first? Let's see. We have. Um, um, Let's see, uh, will the T consider redrawing the zoning for commuter rail, especially South Shore? My main concern comes from how other lines are connected by rapid transit. I'll fall under zone 1A, uh, but this does not include Quincy Center or Braintree, such as the zone 1A cutoffs for JFK and UMass. Um, well, that's not quite the topic for this evening. I understand how all fair things seem appropriate to, to raise up this evening. Stephen, can I ask you to unmute and uh, speak to our thinking about zone, the Zone 1A? Sure, happy to. Um, thank you for the question. Um, you know, our commuter rail fares are really designed on two on two axes. One, the distance from the inner core, and two, to be competitive with other modes, such as driving, carpooling, et cetera. We understand that there are areas on the edge of zones 1A, 1, and 2 in particular, where this can be confusing. But at this time, we're more focused on people-based changes to our fare structure rather than location-based ones. In other words, trying to help folks in certain situations rather than folks in certain locations. We found that location-based changes to our zone structure on the commuter rail can be slow to react to demographic changes and can be a slippery slope with other areas of our system and lots of unintended consequences. So at this time, we're not considering moving other stations into zone 1A, but again, I do appreciate the comment and understand that there is some complexity, especially um, at the fringe of zone 1A, 1 and 2. So thank you. And then there's another question, thank you, Stephen, that came through the chat. Will Charlie cards received through hospitals um, or other subsidized programs also get charged for the new fees? Places like hospitals will be able to receive cards in bulk from the MBTA. Uh, this includes cards like those available to the general public, which are subject to the fame, same fees, or they can get limited use um, cards that are valid for shorter periods of time. So a couple different options for, uh, for moving that forward. And at this point, um, I'll go to the raise hand, uh, last name Bush Miles. You should be able to unmute. Am I unmuted? Yes, you are. 
Hi, good evening. I'm Mela Bush Miles. I am the director of Transit Oriented Development and I direct the T Riders Union at ACE, Alternatives for Community and Environment. The T Riders Union organizes transit riders to fight for first class MBTA service in Greater Boston. We are also a voice for the movement for equitable public transportation in lower income communities and communities of color. We work to uh, uh, we demand respect, equality, equity, accountability, first class service, and affordability. Today, my um, comment is uh, relevant to um, a few issues. First of all, um, we're living at a time in a city that is the third most expensive city to, in which to live. And um, transit eats up a big chunk of uh, people's budgets, especially lower income people and those who may uh, be just above the uh, extremely low income le level and the low income level, people who used to be middle income are now low income because of the cost of living in the uh, Commonwealth of Massachusetts and more specifically Boston. Those who have access to banks and technology um, who do not have access to banks due to whatever uh, reason that they might have for not for being unbanked, whether they're um, undocumented or otherwise, and also the technology with wallets on their phones and things and these other high-tech uh, telephone uh, systems that some folks have access to, those folks will have to pay the higher um, fee by purchasing a Charlie card. And we are opposed to the $3 fee for purchasing a, a Charlie, on the Charlie cards. It will create a dual system similar to the ASC 1.0 fair collection system that is being phased out where cash paying riders had to pay a higher fare or a surcharge just for the reason of pay, uh, paying cash. So now we'll see a similar system and this should not happen. It's like a fare increase. And I also would like to uh, find out if riders who have the old Charlie cards, which had a, a I think a seven year lifespan will have to buy a new card while they still had um, time left on the old Charlie card. Will they be asked to go and purchase a new card and transfer or will the uh, transfer be uh, free to them? Um, also, the fact that the MBTA pays $1.50 for the Charlie cards, why do they charge in the writing public $3? Everyone may not go under but you should not have to pay $3 when the cost of the MBTA is $1.50. The MBTA is supposed to be a public good and it is public transportation, not um, um, a profit making um, entity. We, I am commenting as a partner organization of public transit, public good, and we are here unified in our voices to um, go against this uh, specific $3 charge on, for the Charlie card, as well as the elimination of the pass back, because we do have uh, the example that Ms. Sabrina Davis gave, where people were coming up here to do advocacy or go to the state house or exercise their civic duties and civil rights, that they would have to all buy a Charlie card when they don't even live in in this area and they're in an RTA system. That should not be happening to people because it's making it even more difficult to come up and to advocate for our rights within the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I thank you for allowing me to speak. And I think that, and I hope that you take into consideration the recommendations that are being made tonight um, because we don't want to just spend our time doing this and then you move on with what you are going to do anyway, which sometimes does happen. So thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Th nice to see you, Mela. Um, and um, I'm gonna ask, I'm not sure if either of 
uh, Neil or Arthur, there was one question embedded in some of Mela's comments and about the older cards. I know we addressed that everybody will have to get a new card. If you have a balance on your old card, that'll transfer over. But for those who have a current Charlie card, the, the, the more physical Charlie card, they will also have to pay the $3 fee when they get a new card. Can I get either Neil or Arthur to pop on their video and just confirm that, that I got that accurate? So yes, that's correct. Um, so uh, the, let me just center myself for a second here, but yes, um, the the current plans are for there to be a $3 um, enablement fee or, or card fee that is charged um, for, for all of the new cards. Uh, and, and as described previously, that supports the one more trip protection and that will be charged um, as part of a transition process when you're getting a new card, either from your current card or a new card outright. Hey, thank you, Arthur. Um, we have some questions in the, in the chat. Uh, what is the timeline for this system transition? Um, these, well, we are going to, um, thinking about having the board make some say, make some decisions on, on these issues of fair policy. These won't be implemented until we begin um, service commencement really on bus and, and subway. And so that is phased in. A second question we had was about the plan for integration to commuter rail. It seemed like they were, they were two separate systems. So how is that working? We do have a phased plan for implementation where bus and subway would come first and commuter rail would come um, approximately a year a year thereafter, but that is part of the, the phasing in process. And ultimately your one your one Charlie card will work on all on all of the systems. That is the goal that we're working towards. Um, we have a um, uh, somebody asked uh, it was a comment of since when has the MBTA had a privatized fare system and why a privatized system? Um, it's hard for me to answer that. I think that's a, uh, a way that is sometimes our, our partnership with our vendor um, has been characterized. We have uh, many vendors at the MBTA that we work with to deliver all sorts of um, benefits to our, our riders and our fare system has always relied on partnerships with, with vendors. Um, Moving to the next comment that we have, um, with the new card, will people be able to reload online or only at machines unless with a digital wallet? And Neela, can I ask for you to maybe come on and help answer the question about reloading? Yes. Um, one of the major goals of the new system is to make it as easy as possible to reload your card. So we'll support reloads online, whether that's via our new website or mobile app. Uh, via a fair vending machine, so as you do in person, over an automated phone system um, or our call center, so if you want to talk to an, an actual agent, um, and our in-person service centers like the Charlie Card Store. So you should you have uh, many different options to reload your card. Thanks, Neely. Yeah. Um, Another comment, I'm just going to remind people they can raise their hands if they want to make a comment. A lot, I don't see any other hands raised, so I'm going to keep going through the comments that we have in the chat. Um, with an expected improvement in more accurate ridership patterns, can we expect the T to take um, more or stronger steps in the near future for better service expansion? And I think um, service expansion, we opened the green line extension yesterday, a very exciting for us day for us at the MBTA. Uh, service expansions most often are born as capital expenses. Um, Good ridership data is important for day-to-day -day planning and season-to-season -season planning for the MBTA, but also to help us plan for um, any potential future service expansions. I will just say those are complicated and take many years of, of planning. Our other major service expansion in the works right now involves South Coast Rail on the commuter rail. Um, but uh, I won't say that fares will cover capital expansions. So we have still a lot, a big gap to do before big service expansions can happen. Um, I would also note that in terms of service expansion on our bus system, which certainly has a different, different level of capital investment, we are in the middle of a major overhaul to our bus 
bus infrastructure, um, our bus uh, network that is, uh, bus network redesign is what we're calling that, is currently in progress. There's gonna be lots of public meetings happening over the spring to talk more about that, but we have not made any major changes to our bus network in I think nearly 60 years. Uh, so that is certainly uh, coming and data from our system does certainly does help us. Um, and next question, um, uh, will there be the, Will there be the most cost infection options for purchasing commuter rail fees presently use uh, zone seven or eight would be particularly beneficial to those working in a hybrid situation? Um, so uh, as of right now, individuals can purchase a one-way commuter rail pass. Um, they can purchase a monthly pass that does have a discount on it, but you have to travel enough to make that discount worth it. And we have been piloting a uh, five day flex pass on commuter rail. And uh, actually we're going to our board in two days in order to make that permanent. That includes a discount um, and a package of five one day trips um, that you can, you can travel unlimited times in that one day and any five days over a 30 day cycle. So that might be something for that individual to look for and see if it would be helpful for them and their travel patterns. Um, there's a question about how does one validate the T pass um, given the information at Union Square branch was a little bit confusing. Um, when the new system is fully rolled out, you'll be tapping your card the same across the entire green line. Um, and currently, um, or, or you will then tap your card at any door when you board at an above ground station like Union Square. Um, uh, currently our system and our staff are working hard to ensure that individuals can validate their fares on the new system uh, while we wait for um, all of the benefits of fare transformation. Um, and I'll take one more here. Will, will riders still be able to add um, fare in cash at the machines and on the bus? And um, riders will be able to add fares in cash at fare vending machines at our retail network that we are working on expanding where you could go into convenience stores and the like in order to add cash to your system um, and at any in-person service centers. You won't be able to load cash on the bus. Um, so you'll need to reload cash either before you board or um, as Stephen explained in the presentation, if you don't have an option near you, you'll always be able to take your one uh, additional trip, that protection that is part of the enablement fee um, is, is covering for riders. And um, I'm gonna go to, let's see, oh, I have a, a raised hand, sorry. Um, last name, Koholo? I'm not sure I'm saying that correctly. Uh, yes, uh, I can follow what I'm calling as a private citizen. Um, question about maintenance of the Charlie cards. Uh, the reason I'm asking this is over the years, uh, you tend to have issues with the Charlie cards. Primarily, they tend to expire with funds on them. And the only way to get, to get that issue corrected is found you have to go to Downtown Crossing. I believe it's called a store. I'm not sure if that's the correct name, but Downtown Crossing. And, you know, at times, there's tremendous lines there and you give up. And typically what you end up doing is just get another chunk card. And I'll tell you right now, I have at least two or three of them with funds on them. I just need to find time to get back to downtown crossing. But, you know, my typical ordeal every month is I go to South Station and I buy commuter rail tickets and I reload onto my Charlie card. However, every now and then the Charlie card will have issues they are unable to maintain or fix your Charlie car at South Station. You can add funds, but you can't fix it. You have to go to downtown crossing. What I'd like to ask the MBTA to do is if you can take my money at South Station and issue me a new Charlie card, please add the service of maintaining the Charlie card at South Station. You have a tremendous amount of customers at South Station to have to go to downtown crossing, and, and that's not in your necessarily in your path of travel. It's a huge inconvenience. And 
at this point, I don't know how much funds I have in two or three different Charlie cards that I need to obtain. But if that can be um, brought up, I really appreciate it because one location is a hardship at times. But uh, like I said, if you can take my money at South Station, you should be able to also do the services that the Charlie store does at South Station as well. Thank you for listening. And I, I, I thank you for your comment. Um, a couple of things that will change in the, in the new system. It, I think about that for the technical people on this call, they're maybe not gonna like this analogy, but I think about we're moving from a card-based system where the cards were actually physically encoded to have sort of have your money stored on it to an account-based system that's a little more in the, in the cloud, but you have a card that connects to that. So we hope that this idea that you have multiple cards with different money on each card that we're really getting rid of that problem for you. Uh, but I also very much hear your desire that we have um, uh, ultimately expand to have more in-person service centers, particularly in your case for at, at the uh, at, at South Station. Um, we, are, we are definitely endeavoring to make a system that makes it easier for people to access their account and make changes with their account and where you can link, link cards on your account if you have a, a person in your home you're responsible for or um, a family base and you can sort of see all of that and do more on your own uh, without without needing us but um, I also hear the concern that we still need to have uh, people to help out with some of these changes so again thank you very much for your comment um, I'm going through we have a few more comments in the in the chat um, um, so I have uh, one question. Can there be a mechanism to prevent a second commuter rail conductor um, or a second proof of payment inspector from accidentally or by default charging a second fare for the same journey? Um, yes, absolutely. Once your fare is verified on your trip, you'll autom automatically pass if you, for any reason, were verified again in the future. That is also a level of inefficiency for us as staff. So we're working hard to figure out um, how our fair verification team should move throughout the system so that they're not in, put in a position to be double checking individuals um, during, during um, traditional trips. Um, okay, I have, a, I think a question, maybe a comment in here. Um, can I use my current March monthly pass already purchased from your machine and refill moving forward so I don't buy a new card? Um, so in the future system, you're going to be able to continue to use your one, your one card and put your monthly passes on it. I'm confused if the question is, can you use the card that you have today in the future system without the enablement fee? And I believe the answer to that is no, but you would not be paying an enablement fee every time you bought a monthly pass. It would be one time. Um, I... Um, I think, I think I got that right. I see Arthur turned his camera on, so I wonder if that means I made an error. <laughs> I just wanted to add one thing that I, 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 I may be hearing in the question, which is if you have a commuter rail pass today, you have to buy a, a separate flash pass for each month. Uh, and so that ends up looking uh, a, little bit, a little bit like this, a separate Charlie card. Um, and that is something that will completely change in the new system. In the new system, uh, you will have one Charlie card. It will just, just look like this, and you'll be able to use it and load a monthly pass on commuter rail uh, month in and month out uh, without having to change anything about the card that you have. OK. I do not currently see any other questions in the chat. Um, oh, I apologize. We have one about. Um, RTAs. Um, uh, the question is, today I use my senior Charlie card on both the MBTA and my regional transit authority. Um, uh, regional transit authorities um, often operate uh, buses and paratransit services in regions generally outside the greater Boston area, such as Metro West um, or uh, Cape Cape Ann, I think is one, Cape Cod. Okay, so the question is, what discussions have been held with the RTAs so I can continue to use one fair media on both the MBTA and the RTAs? Um, and will the RTAs be able to afford the cubic equipment? Um, 
So uh, we as an organization have uh, made multiple different prov provisions for the RTAs to be able to integrate with the new Charlie card system, but it certainly is going to take some time. Each RTA signs its own contract for fair collection equipment. So um, uh, we're definitely interested in providing options for them to connect with our new system. I think it's fair to say the RTAs are a partner of ours and we are actively working with our RTA partners on solutions that will meet their needs, the needs of their riders who travel between different agencies, and certainly any riders who receive any sort of um, reduced fare. I know the comment was for a senior Charlie card holder, and that's important uh, for all of us to make sure we do. And I'm looking to see if there are any other um, comments that I have missed. Someone asked, they labeled it as a fluffy question. I appreciate that. Is the design image on the new Charlie card set? I'm going to say, I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's not my area. <laughs> uh, but I appreciate the question, and I can try to figure something out. Um, uh, what I would like to do then is, if we can go forward to the next slide. I realize it's after 7 o'clock, and many of you probably would like to be doing some other things this evening. While I pause and just confirm there aren't any questions in the interpretation rooms, if someone can let me know about that. Um, uh, we, I would like to make sure everyone knows that we have an email address, publicengagement at mbta.com. Uh, all comments made tonight, either out loud or in the chat or emails that you sent, or if you've previously sent a, a letter to the MBTA, all of those will be compiled. Um, the staff will go through all of those comments. Um, at times, we might make some suggested changes uh, in terms of the recommendations that, that we're making, um, and certainly all of that will be given to our board who will ultimately make a decision. Um, I do note there was one question in the chat. I'm not sure that we answered, and uh, while it seems a little a little off topic, I'm going to bring. I want to just raise it and see if anyone else has a comment to make on it. Um, the question was said. Yes, we're hopefully reducing both heavy emissions for people with chronic health conditions, such as lung cancer, modernizing the commuter rail fleet, uh, including. Framingham, Worcester, and Fitchburg, respectively. I think that may have come in through with expanding South Coast Rail comment, and I'm sorry if that is not true, but uh, I want to just acknowledge that we we got your comment and we heard that. Um, seeing no more hands raised, and at this point in time, no more questions in the chat. Um, I oh, I'm sorry. I have a I have I have a two questions that came directly to me. Oopsie. Okay. Um, how will transfers work on machines and how will the new car, card know about the old card? Um, and by new card, I think, um, I'm not, I, I think tran transfers will work in a very similar way as today. So once we set transfer policies right now, um, and we'll note this came in from last name Baxter, the transfers between sort of the commuter rail, between all modes is difficult since they're not all on the same fare media. So in the future, we could have um, um, uh, different fare, different, uh, we could provide for the possibility of transfers between modes such as commuter rail and bus, uh, which currently right now would be a little more difficult for us to do since they're not operating on the same system. Um, and in terms of the machines, we're in the process, as many know, moving from upgrading a lot of our fair vending machines um, in order to modernize them and ensure proper proper payment uh, systems. But they those systems will be sort of talking to our new system as well um, as we move uh, into a all everyone needing a, a new card. We don't expect the system to turn on overnight. It'll be an it'll take an integration over a period of time. Um, uh, I have a couple other comments. I'm uh, just noticing, I apologize, when they came direct message to me, I don't always see them. Um, and so give me one second. Let's see. Next question's coming in. Um, 
Uh, another person is asking, can we clarify when the new system will be implemented? At this point in time, uh, we're, still, we're still working on that. Uh, we have a lot of design work left to, left to do. And so our revenue service commencement, uh, which is when we will begin on uh, bus and subway is not yet at a fixed point in time, uh, but we are working to get our board to make some important decisions that'll help us continue to plan as we go forward. I note there was a comment in the chat, uh, not a question, that um, uh, even laundromats don't charge for a new car to load money on. Um, next, I have um, a question. How has Biden's infrastructure plan benefited the NBTA? Could it in any way help offset the uh, cost for users. Um, the Biden infrastructure plan um, or the federal plan um, to invest in all sorts of infrastructure, including transit, is certainly something the MBTA is very enthusiastic uh, about. Um, many of those capital, the, those dollars are going to capital expenditures. Um, and so uh, we have a plan at the MBTA through our capital planning team. Um, which I think actually will be presented to our board in the next coming next couple of days around how we plan to see the increase in investments from the federal government and how we plan to use those in order to increase reliability and improve service on the system. Certainly the MBTA has a lot of financial needs uh, and we appreciate the additional money from the federal government to help us um, make, uh, make progress in a lot of different areas. A um, uh, comment that we have in the ch in the chat, um, I believe cash should be used. Low-income people can use it instead of having a bank account or a smartphone. The problem with the current fare box is the dollar feeder, which could be easily fixed uh, for a fancy fare box. Also, how long does a phone or bank card transaction take? Many bank cards take a long time to be approved. Um, I certainly appreciate the concern about the dollar feeders on um, current fare boxes or what that technology is like um, and uh, appreciate the concern. I don't know if either Neely or Arthur could comment about how long um, the transactions um, have to process. Yeah, um, so we have standards to ensure that all taps are processed within about half a second to ensure that everyone can board quickly. And as for credit and debit cards, the only types of credit and debit cards that we're going to be able to accept are the tappable contactless ones. So people aren't going to be swiping or inserting chips when they're trying to board. Thank you, Neely. Um, I noticed another comment uh, coming through the chat that the system is cost prohibitive for the T and its riders and is very complicated. This new system hasn't simplified riders' ability to use the T. Um, and then, um, I think our la last comment, um, uh, can you go over how people will be able to transfer the balance from their old Charlie card to the new ones when they have implemented? Um, so you'll have the option of going, um, certainly going to the Charlie card store, mailing your old card or visiting a station, um, when the Charlie card van is at that is at that station, and staff will be developing more of a plan um, in order to support uh, the the need to to be able to make those transfers, those those balance transfers as we move forward and closer to implementing. Okay, I thank you all for staying with us for some extra time this evening. I don't think I have missed any questions or comments. I'm looking to any of my colleagues on this call to tell me if I've missed anything um, that has come in. I have no more direct messages. Arthur, is there any more questions that I have missed on your list? No, I believe we're all set. All right. Um, well, then at this point in time, I'd like to thank you all. Again, our email address is available to you. Um, and uh, you can learn obviously more information about all of these, uh, all of our plans at mbta.com. But I wanna thank you for joining us this evening. I wanna say an a special thanks to our many interpreters who are here with us this evening, um, who are helping us 
make sure that we can communicate uh, with our riders and with the public. So thank you to all of them for being here tonight. And I wish you a good evening. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.